Many organizations are finding out that a cloud-native architecture was a huge mistake. Let's talk about it. So welcome back to the Cloud Computing Insider. This channel explores the ins and outs of cloud computing without an agenda or following into the narrative set by big tech marketing. We look at what works, what does not, and the actual value of this technology in a balanced and information forward way. If that interests you, please subscribe, like, and comment. So this kind of goes along with some of the other shows we've done, certainly on the microservices and the death of microservices and other things around some assumptions in terms of what cloud computing systems are using and how they're potentially failing some of the enterprises out there as they're leveraging this technology. So Cloud Native made some promises uh, you know, many years ago. Uh, they became the trifecta in terms of agility, scalability, and cost savings. However, the reality check has been much different. 78% of the initiatives failed to deliver expected value. And some of the hidden challenges that we're seeing include unexpected operational costs, extended migration timelines, security vulnerabilities, uh, compliance complications, and most organizations experience negative return in the first 18 months and few find business value after that. So ultimately, this becomes a message of understanding that these pitfalls are becoming a reality before committing to cloud native systems. And we need to understand what they are and how to validate the use of a cloud native architecture in light of the upsides and many of the downsides are gonna be there. So what the heck is a cloud native architecture, Dave? Uh, and really, it's really an architecture and kind of development approach. Uh, the cloud native architecture involves designing and deploying applications specifically for cloud environments, leveraging features like containerization, microservices, and orchestration. So ultimately, it was designed to provide us with a better approach to developing and deploying systems. So the approach promotes flexibility, scalability, resilience, allowing organizations to rapidly develop and iterate on their software. So that was the primary advantage or how it was being sold to enterprises out there. So by breaking applications into smaller manageable components, teams can independently update or scale parts without affecting the entire system. So the componentization or the divide and conquer became a primary selling point for uh, cloud native architectures. And that's why many enterprises out there adopted it. So we've been at this for about five to seven years, depending on who you ask. And so 78% of the cloud initiatives fail to deliver promised business value uh, in terms of cloud native architectures. This according to uh, Flexera, average cloud waste is 32% of spend and $1.8 million annual for enterprises is also according to Flexera. Over-engineering is leading to two to three times development cost, according to McKenzie. So organization complexity and the ability not to understand the downsides of leveraging this technology is leading many enterprises to a diminished amount of business return that's coming from the use of this technology. So instead of more traditional approaches like monolithic, the ability to kind of use cloud native approaches, containerization, microservices, things like that certainly has the promise of agility, flexibility, and scalability, and therefore value, but that value has uh, not necessarily uh, shown itself. And some of the organizations out there, and you'll see in the description below, you can read some of the references that I have. We're seeing that there's a huge amount of diminishing business value that's coming from cloud native approaches and cloud native architectures. So organizational complexity and hidden costs, 65% underestimate operational complexity of cloud native architectures. This according to Gartner. Training costs average $45,000 per engineer. Team restructuring costs often exceed initial estimates by 40%. And cultural resistance to cloud native architecture leads to 40% project delays. Of course, technical debt and migration issues are there as well. 75% of migrations take longer and cost more than planned. Average cost overruns 47%, this according to IBM Cloud Migration Study. Legacy system integration costs are two to four times that initial ex estimates are. Uh, and then technical debt com compounds at 25% annually. So we're not seeing a lot of good promising metrics that are coming from the use of uh, cloud native architectures. And again, look at the references I make in the description in terms of some of the other studies that are kind of validating what, what I'm saying here and what others are saying as well. 
And of course, security and compliance failures are there as well. Annual cost of cloud security breach is $4.35 million via an IBM security report. 89% experienced security incidents due to complexity and compliance violations cost an average of $3.6 million annually. 92% lack proper security controls. Pretty scary. So some are seeing some ROI, most are not. ROI and valuation realization, only 32% achieve expected ROI within a planned time frame. Average time to positive ROI is 2.5 years versus one year planned. And 45% report negative value in the first 18 months. And finally, the total cost of ownership increases by average 40 three percent over three years and that 2.5 times uh the amount of cost is something that's consistent uh with my research and i certainly wrote about this in my book so most people when they think they're going to get value or return on investment uh the cost associated with operating these things which is going to be a factor of one normally it's a factor of 2.5 times what they thought they would be spending on operating these systems. And cloud native is no different. You gotta remember we're, we're creating something that's far more complex, has many different moving parts, and those have to be managed. We have to deal with security in the context of that complexity. We have to deal with operations and governance in the context of that complexity, database management, all those sorts of things. While cloud native may have some value in certain instances, the reality is it's been over applied uh, to many different problem domains where it had no chance of providing the value that I think people expected. And of course, everything worked at the end of the cycle. So in other words, they made the systems run. Uh, however, they ran at a higher security risk. They ran at a higher operational cost. They ran at a higher training cost. They ran at a higher compliance cost. And that ended up being a net negative value that came from using cloud native architecture. So something that was very cool and promoted as very cool, uh, organizations, consulting organizations had huge um, uh, practices that are just dealing with cloud native architectures, for example, ended up not necessarily delivering the value the majority of times. And that's pretty scandalous. The fact that something was sold to enterprises, something that's going to be cool, it's going to deliver a huge amount of value, huge amounts of flexibility, and that never materialized is something we need to consider. And certainly as we move forward and see new architectures that are on the horizon, the ability to kind of evaluate these with a skeptical eye to figure out what are the good aspects and bad aspects of these. And Cloud Native taught us some lessons. So the key takeaway is why cloud native architecture can deliver value. 63% of organizations report negative or neutral return in the few first two years with positive ROI typically requiring longer timeframes, like significantly more investment than was initially projected. And that seems to be consistent. So most people are not seeing an ROI from the use of cloud native systems. And if they are seeing an ROI, it's coming way later than expected and is taking way greater investment than expected. So again, we have to look at cloud native technology, cloud native architecture, cloud native development, just as we looked in, in its core components, microservices and containerization as being very cool options in terms of how we're gonna build and deploy uh, very sophisticated systems. But we have to be rather skeptical in terms of their ability to provide value. In some instances, even though it seems like it's what all the cool kids are doing, it may not be something that we should be practicing. We may have to look at more traditional application development approaches, uh, you know, doing things the way we've been doing for the last 30 years. And in many cases, that may be the path of least resistance and the path of most ROI. And our job as IT professionals is to build systems that returns the most amount of business value. And if that's the case, cloud native architectures may not be an option for us in many of the cases I'm seeing out there. That's just the reality of it. Well, that's all I have for this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, don't forget to check out my InfoWorld blog. Also check out my uh, 128 uh, LinkedIn learning courses uh, out on LinkedIn learning. Also my generative AI course out on Go Cloud Careers. We're having a great fun over there building projects and going through the ins and outs of how to build and deploy a generative AI architecture. Also, don't forget my book, Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing. And uh, follow me on LinkedIn. Love to see you over there. So until next time, you guys stay very safe. Cheers.